Hello YouTube, this is You Can Do It Dave. Um, I had a friend donate an e-bike to my various projects and I kind of have an idea of what I'm going to do with it. The problem is I'm not going to be using it as an e-bike. So currently what I am going to be doing is taking out the motor hub the, uh, the motor in the hub. Um, I'm going to be taking out the electronics, the uh, wiring, and the throttle. Okay, so let's get started. Now one of the things you always want to do when working with electricity and various harnesses is have a roll of duct tape handy and or masking tape. Always label the plugs. Okay. I may never use the headlamp on this thing again, but it'll cut down on the guesses that you have to guess to uh, actually find the motor connector connectors. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and um, figure this wiring mess out. I've got to figure out what the headlight is, what the signal light is, what the horn is, backtrack it, and label each one of these connectors. Okay, so after taking apart the e-bike, I now have the fully labeled wiring harness with all the little labels on it. Okay, I have the fully labeled uh, motor controller. Okay, not really sure what that was since it was not connected to anything, but I'm assuming it's some kind of an alarm. You have the throttle with the, the plugs. You have the uh, charging jack, the horn, the signal flasher, and the ignition. Okay, and you also have the all-important e-bike motor, the hub motor. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on the motor, and what I want to do is I want to make a power plant. A portable mini power plant. Okay, so one of the things I'm having problems with is getting these nuts out of the wheel. I find you take your vice grips, clamp on, and just crack, just crack, crack the seal. Okay, then you, take, then you can take a special screwdriver bit, and they just come right out. Instead of trying to, to force that loose, you can uh, do it the easy way and crack the seal first. So after taking out all these screws and lifting this plate off, I realized that the center hub is one solid piece of aluminum. Okay, and for this idea to work, this tire and this hub have to go. So I'm going to have to grind them off so that all I have left is the motor hub. Okay, that's the next step. After grinding off all the um, spokes of the wheels, since it was solid, all one piece solid cast aluminum, I had to grind each one flat. Okay, so now I'm, all I'm left with is the actual hub motor on its axle. Okay, so we, we can now connect it to the wiring harness and plug in the battery and give it a test run. Now, before I did this, I made sure to do an internet search to see if it was uh, required to be grounded, because I know some, some things have a common ground, and apparently these e-bikes do not share a common ground. So, we should be able to plug in the battery. Plug in the battery. Turn on the key, and then give it some throttle. So now that is the lowest speed, okay, and it's completely variable.
Okay, so there is high speed right there. Now if you're going to try this at home, do not do any sudden movements. Okay, you'll notice I, I sped it up really slowly because it, it, it's, it's, it has lots of torque. And if I suddenly let this thing go, it would fly right off the table. Okay, so you got to do it very slowly, increase slowly and decrease slowly. Wherever I mount this motor, I'll have full control of the speed. I can slow it down, or I can speed it up. Okay, so now that we know that works, now that we know that this works, we can go out and get the next part of the puzzle. We can't really do anything on this side of the wheel. So the idea is to get a 10 and a half inch sprocket, okay. This one here, I got, it, it had a half inch hole in the center. Well, I took it to a local machine shop and I got them to laser cut the inside out. Okay, it's a lot lighter now, but it's still a good heavy sprocket. Then I drilled, then I drilled the holes to match the holes in the hub. Okay, so now all I've got to do is find slightly longer screws that are the threaded the same, and take the and uh, take the screws out and put new screws in, and that will be my drive my drive motor right there. So we've installed the sprocket on the motor. Now, in my last video, when I was test running the motor, I, I heard a, a loud click, 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 click. Well, come to find out that when, when you remove this cover plate, the armature in there, the inside of the motor, shifts and sticks to the magnets. Okay, so when I put it back together, I did not tap it into place to separate that contact. So every time the motor spun, it was tick, 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 against the uh, the magnets. So you have to make sure, and I kind of trialed and errored and played with it, um, but I think I got it to the point where it's fairly center and it's a lot making a lot less noise. Okay, so after putting the sprocket on and test running it just to make sure it works, now it's time to take the rest of the pieces and make the rest of the uh, what do you call it? Transmission frame. So I'm in the process of making up the A-frame and unfortunately my chop saw is buried under, under a bunch of stuff. Since I've been uh, getting ready to build this Hobbit home, everything's being packed into one building. And unfortunately I can see the, see the chop saw, but I cannot get to it. So. Um, by using the hand grinder, which is not the straightest way to cut stuff, I've been able to make up two A-frames, okay. Um, I still have to bolt them together, but I use wood screws just to uh, give me an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay, these bearings are going to go in here. Okay. Motor is going to go right in about there somewhere. So far so good. Now I'm going to drill these holes out. Going to drill the holes out and um, see how it looks after that. Well, after working on this thing for most of the day yesterday, I managed to get the two A-frames done, the bottom braces done, the uh, bearing blocks put in, the chain attached, and just for the heck of it, I put on a regular fan blade. Okay. So we'll turn on the key. Now I do know that I need a chain tensioner right here. So this is going to be a little bit noisy, but we'll give it a try. Okay, we'll give it some juice here. So there's low speed.
so that is my mini e-bike transmission. Um, this will be it for this video. All I have to do is add a little chain tensioner and then it's done. Um, this is You Can Do It Dave and we'll see you next time.